Photoshop, Illustrator, and Firebase. And a typical workflow starts with a static design time. Mm -hmm. Why Photoshop is not showing you the design, looks like here. All right, so I'm in Photoshop CS4 here. And this is just a static design comp that I've been working on with someone else. And it's not structured in a great way here, I'll tell you. Um, I just threw some uh, text here uh, because I wanted this to be a slider ultimately. I've got some different groupings here like uh, <coughs> my uh, contacts panel here. I've got my products panel here that will show off a little bit later. Some different groupings here. Um, then I've got got a small mouse pad surface here. So. Uh, then I've got just a rectangle here with a little bevel set on it. I've got some Photoshop text that I put in it. I've got this orange square that's going to be a button. This is just uh, how a typical comp would go over the wall to another. And what I want to do is I'm going to open up the Max Preview Build of Flash Catalyst. We're going to leverage that static Photoshop design and start to design the interaction and behavior. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new project by leveraging that Photoshop file. And that's our PSD file that we're going to open up here. Uh, I'm going to choose to any text in that file. I still want it to be editable text. Some of the gradients that I find uh, in Photoshop, or if I was using uh, Illustrator, I want to leave them editable so I'll be able to work with them uh, with the tool. Our developer later on will be able to work with them programmatically. Uh, so we're going to leave that in. But what Catalyst is doing here is it's actually looking through the layers of that Photoshop file and converting it to MXML. So it's creating a well-formed flex project here in the background. Um, I'm actually going to turn on the auto effects so as I make changes in the design and we'll the timelines that are created for us. Um, but I'm going to show you that it looks exactly the way it did in Photoshop here on the canvas. And I go through and I have access to the same layers. Um, remember I have that context form here. I have the products, uh, set of graphics there. Um, but I'm going to show you that in the background, we actually have uh, the beginnings of this flex project that's starting to get built up. And architecturally, this is some common code that we share between our developer tool flex builder and our design tool flash catalyst. So that you're going to have a guarantee of the same fidelity when you bounce between these two tools, both on the code side and on the canvas. So let's start to actually take this static design here and define some of the unique interactions. The so first thing I'm going to do is I've got this text that I typed out in Photoshop, and I specified a very specific font, color, weight, shadow, uh, even an inset that I really wanted for this. this it's going to be a text box. Here. And I've got this rectangle with the embossing there. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to convert it to a text input control. And I'll even go into it. And I'll say that I want the text, the usable text area to be about that big. So when we run this later, you're going to see, and it still looks the same on the canvas right now, you're going to see that that'll be a functional text box that we'll be able to work with later on in our design. The other thing is I've got this text here, I've got this orange thing, and I think I've got a shadow. And I'm going to turn this into a button that we can work with. And the interesting thing with something like a button, if we dive into it, Everything has depth and structure in our design. So a button by default will have an up and over, a down, and a disabled state that we could design. We can make some tweaks to each of these states. So maybe, for example, in the over state, we can go in here and I'll just do something like changing opacity. So we'll see a little subtle difference as we mouse over this new button that we made in our design. And maybe even in the down state here, I'm going to grab some of the artwork and I'm just going to you might not see this subtle here, but I'm going to shift it down by three pixels and over by three pixels. So it'll be subtle, but if we go into our different states, when we click down on it, you're going to see it actually move and kind of indent it to the right one. That's exactly how we want that button to feel. Um, so the next thing we're going to do, um, I've got these, these letters here. This is going to be our slider. I've got this orange uh, triangle uh, selector here, and I've got my letters. I'm going to select these and I'm going to turn this into a vertical scroll bar. Now, this is a little bit more complex component because it's got a piece that moves, it's got a track that it should move within the bounds of. So I'm going to go and dive into this and I can assign some of the pieces and parts of the artwork here to what this component expects. And in this edit in place mode, I can say that this orange thing should be the thumb 
for this component, for this scroll bar. And these letters back here, this is going to be the track. And that's really all I need to assign now to make this a, a functional component. So what I'll do is, just with those changes, I'm going to go and run our project here. So it's taking, remember, as we brought this Photoshop artwork in, it created the beginnings of a flex project as we started to draw things on the canvas, design some of the interaction and behavior. It's been creating more flex code. And when it compiled here, we're now in a browser. We've got this Swift. Um, and now when I hover over this, you see that, that subtle little change. Do oh, you see that? We'll click down on it, it moves a little bit. If we go in here, I can type. I've got this that moves within the context of the track. Um, so we've got the beginnings that when a developer works with this later, it totally doesn't look like a vertical scroll bar that a developer would have pulled out of their toolbox, but they can work with it and think about it the same way. So just like the components had um, states, our whole experience can have states or pages as well. So what I'm going to do up here is I'm going to say, I'm going to duplicate the state a couple times. And I'll create three pages for my experience, and I'll call this my intro. All this, um, we're going to search by my name here. And we call this third one, I'll search by product. Okay. And I'm going to make some freeform changes now between these three stairs. Close that. And I um, forgot to turn these into buttons. Let me turn them into buttons here too. So as a designer, uh, they gave me uh, kind of a glow version of each of these and a regular version. And I'm just going to turn these into buttons, actually. So, that, turn this into a button. And when I turn it into a button, I'm going to go into it here. And you see the up, over, down states of the button. You go up here and you see how the, the states are color-coded. So we've got the red, the blue, the green. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say that that glow version shouldn't show up in the up state. So just the blue version should show up. And I'll do the same thing for this name one here that we created. I'll take both the blue version and the red version and we'll convert it to a button. Go into it here. And we'll turn the red one So I've got my three states now, my three uh, pages of my experience here, and I'm going to make some preform changes between these. So first thing I'm going to do is take uh, all this artwork here that is our contacts panel, <coughs> and I'm going to group it. Now, along the way, I'm going to point out some things to watch out for in this first preview build. Number one is when you group something, it's going to look a little funny for a second. Everything kind of gets grouped up in the corner, and then it moves back down onto the canvas. These are things that we're aware of and we're working on and see resolved before we we'll our first beta. Um, so I, I group that all, and now what I'm going to do is, in this by name state here, I'm sorry, actually in the intro state, I'm going to hide it. And I'm going to take these buttons over here, let's move them into the center of our page, take this text box, this button, and move those into the So now as I go through, this is what my intro state looks like. I'll make this name disappear as well. So here's what my intro state looks like. Here's what my product state looks like. So so if I go to my timeline, you'll notice that as I've been making freeform changes between those states, some default effects have been created. So if I, if I hit play here to, to preview what that transition looks like from the intro state to that product state, the default effects are just a half second, move some things where they move to, fade some things in, fade some things out. What I really want to do is I'm going to tweak this to look a little bit uh, uh, more unique here. So I'm going to say that Starting to design a little bit of the interaction the way that 